Every Super Doom Spire player has to make a very hard decision at some point in their life. A decision so important, it dictates their place and role in society as a direct result of their choice. And that decision is none other than which sword you're gonna use in your loadout. Okay, yes, a bit exaggerated, but it's still a hard decision. The sword is essentially the core of your loadout, as it's often the most useful part of your kit most of the time. There's more than 10 different swords for you to choose from, and in this video, I'm gonna help you narrow down which is right for you. Let's go! Every single sword in the game can be sorted into one of two categories. Either it uses lunge as its special move, or it doesn't. If there's one thing I want you to take home from this video, it's that these ones are for mobility, and these ones are for damage. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Okay, no, there's obviously more to it than that, but this should always be the first step when considering a sword to use in your loadout. If you plan on using other tools with high mobility in your loadout, like the Hoss Hog and the Bloomerang, then using a high damaging sword would be a great choice. If you've already got your damage output covered, then looking towards a lunge sword would be the better choice. If you've decided that a high damaging sword is the best investment, then there's plenty of options that'll support your needs. Let's go through these one at a time, because there's quite a lot. First up is probably the most popular choice out of the damaged swords. You know it, you love it, the Home Runner. The Home Runner is a sword which specializes in knockback with a special move that spells certain death for anyone you can get in range of. It's a really fun and surprisingly competitive option, and if you're eager to learn more, I've made a whole video on this weapon which is linked in the description. Strategy surrounding the home runner is pretty simple. As long as you can get the enemy player inside the hitbox of your home run, it's game over. If you dedicate the other parts of your loadout to closing the distance, you can let the home runner do all of the work. It's a lot of fun to master, and I recommend it to everyone. Another popular choice in the damage category is the Greatsword, which has the potential to be considered basically unfair. It deals 60% more damage with a 60% larger hitbox, with a special move that gives you a temporary mobility boost while dishing out heavy damage and knockback to anyone around you. Unfortunately, this insane damage potential comes with some of the harshest downsides in the game. Its swing speed is halved, and your movement speed is slowed significantly while you have it equipped. These downsides make it much harder to successfully land hits on enemy players, but if you manage to hit them nonetheless, ooh, it's safe to say that they'll know what hit them. The Greatsword relies heavily on synergy with the rest of your loadout, so to maximize the potential of the Greatsword, it'll come at the cost of altering your entire loadout. But if you manage to do so, it'll be worth it. The Greatsword also has a variant with a different special move, the Bamboo Buster. Instead of a powerful AoE attack, it has the ability to shoot a really weak rocket. This is pretty useful when you need to finish off a player on low health, but to be honest, the original Greatsword isn't bad at that either, and its special move also gives you a temporary boost in mobility, which the Bamboo Buster does not. 9 times out of 10, the Greatsword will be a better pick than the Bamboo Buster. The Brick Breaker is the quintessential chaotic evil of the swords in this game. Everything other than its special move is basically irrelevant and not worth mentioning. Its special move is likely the most ridiculous thing in the game, period. It costs a whopping 50 bricks to use every time you activate it, making it quite the investment, but if you manage to land it successfully on someone, they are dead. No questions asked, they're just dead. Simple as that. I've also made an entire video covering the intricacies of this weapon, which will be, again, linked in the description. This weapon is similar to the Greatsword in the sense that it will come at the cost of altering your entire loadout, except with the Brick Breaker, not only do you need mobility, but you also need tools which can collect lots of bricks in order to take advantage of the Brick Breaker's special move. The Brick Breaker is like the stock market. It's a really dumb investment, but it's also really funny in the process. Those are the most popular choices of the damage-focused swords. The rest of the damage-focused swords aren't nearly as useful in as many situations for one reason or another. The Frying Pan is sort of like a really weird hybrid between the Greatsword and the Home Runner. Like the Greatsword, it deals extra damage and like the Home Runner, it has a special move which knocks back nearby enemies. 
Unfortunately, both of these features are watered down to oblivion as it barely deals extra damage and the special move only knocks people a short distance away. For this reason, most players would prefer to have a sword which doesn't compromise on any of its abilities. The Tennis Racket is basically just a troll sword with very little competitive viability. It reflects rockets with a lot of power and has a slightly faster swing speed and a slightly longer reach. Its special move fires a tennis ball which moves in a straight line and stuns enemies who are hit by it. The only time you'll ever see someone using the Tennis Racket is when they use it with an auto clicker and mess with people who shoot rockets in predictable patterns. Outside of using it to troll rocket spammers, the Tennis Racket is basically useless. The Fire Sword deals extra damage over time with every swing and has a special move which fires a projectile that also inflicts damage over time. The damage over time effect is useful for making it take longer for enemies to regenerate their health and using the special move in conjunction with the swing can deal some insane burst damage. The problem is, that's it. It just deals a bit of extra damage at the cost of mobility. It's not a good trade-off as there are many other weapons in the game which can fill the role of dealing damage to your enemies and they do it much better than the fire sword ever could. Finally, we have the ice sword. It's pretty much the exact same as the default sword, except it replaces Lunge with Frost Cutter, which is similar to the Fire Sword special move, except it applies a slowing effect instead of damage over time. Unfortunately, the Ice Sword doesn't apply the slow effect if you use the regular swing. It's a matter of whether you find Lunge or Frost Cutter more useful, and for most people, Lunge is much better. That covers all the options available to you for a damage-oriented sword. There's 5 swords with the lunge ability, and they all build on it in different ways. The default sword is the textbook definition of a jack of all trades. It has insanely good mobility with a speedy lunge that recharges super quickly and doesn't sacrifice on damage either. It deals 25 with a regular swing, 35 with a lunge, and 45 with a double click. The default sword is genuinely a contender for the best weapon in the game, and it probably needs to get nerfed at some point, because it is way too powerful as it is with the mobility it can provide. The default sword will go well with pretty much any loadout you slot it into. The Shadow Blade basically takes the default sword and prioritizes quality over quantity. The Lunge sends you an extra 50% further in the same amount of time, but has a higher cooldown time than the stock sword at 4.5 seconds instead of 3. Additionally, the swing only deals 21 damage and it doesn't have a double click attack. If you would rather carefully use each lunge wisely instead of mindlessly spamming lunges, then the Shadow Blade is a solid choice. The Dark Heart is a unique choice as it focuses on dealing damage even though it uses lunge as its special move. The Dark Heart has 20% lifesteal with every attack, meaning you will heal for 20% of the damage that you deal to enemies with it. You will also instantly gain 25 health after getting a kill with the Dark Heart. The Lunge takes 4 seconds to recharge instead of 3, and it swings a tiny bit slower than normal, so if you're okay with waiting a bit longer between lunges, then the Dark Heart is a great choice. For very little downside, you can heal yourself amidst battle making you harder to kill as you will have more health more often. The Voxcalibur is... Uh, it's a sad sight, man. It's just not good at all. It makes you jump a tiny bit higher and you deal a tiny bit more damage with the sword in midair, but the lunge is 30% slower. I honestly see absolutely no reason why anyone would ever want to use this, but in case you do, uh, have fun I guess? Lastly, we have the Umbrella. -aid. It's the same as the stock sword, but you lose the double click attack for the ability to use its lunge in midair to activate a really weird special move. Your falling speed is lowered significantly, allowing you to traverse long distances at the cost of being temporarily vulnerable once you land. The thing is, it's not really better than just lunging in midair normally. The reason you'll see high level players lunging in midair over and over isn't because they're trying to traverse across the map, but because they're trying to constantly reposition themselves in order to get the upper hand on whoever they're fighting against. The Umbrella Aid is horrible at doing this, as every time you activate the lunge in midair, you are rendered basically defenseless as you slowly meander towards your target for the next 10 seconds. There is some use for the Umbrella Aid in the troll scene, of course, but the troll scene isn't what you should base your loadout off of. 
To recap, the two main categories of swords you can integrate into your loadout are those that use lunge and those that don't. Lunge is usually better than anything else because there really isn't anything in the game that can allow you to quickly reposition yourself every 3 seconds like a lunge sword can. However, there are merits to using a sword which differs from the lunge ability as they can provide great utility in areas other than mobility, usually in the damage department. If you're looking to spice up your gameplay and try out some new ways to score kills, then using something like the Home Runner, Greatsword, or Brick Breaker could be just what you're looking for. Remember, it's never too late to try something new.